Welcome everyone. My name is Caroline Colas and I'm the Senior Director of the Marlene Meyerson JC in Manhattan Health and Wellness Programming Department. And today on our Positive Psychology Hour, Strengthening Your Connection with Your, your Connected Self, Megan McDonough, the uh, founder of the Cult Whole Being Institute, is going to be joining me. And this, uh, the Positive Psychology Hour, is a partnership with the Whole Being Institute. So we started this a year ago, coming up in March, and I'm so excited to have Megan join me today. We're talking about how this pandemic has heightened our feelings of loneliness um, and our sense of connections that we had in daily life pre-COVID has shifted for every one of us. So whether you're married or single or widowed or working or retired, housebound, in the house, out of the house, there are simple steps you can take today, right now, to feel more connected to others and even to yourself and um, help others feel more connected to you. And that's important. Isolation and loneliness is a greater killer than even um, heart disease. So we need to, to address that. In the session, Megan McDonough will share specific strategies that research has shown can increase our sense of connectedness with others. She is of course the CEO and founder of the Whole Being Institute, an educational organization dedicated to teaching the science of human flourishing. I love that. And with a degree in nuclear medicine, decades leaderships experience and 25 years of teaching and practicing yoga, Megan combines intellectual understanding with an embodied approach to teaching and leading. She's an award-winning writer and the author of four books on mindfulness. And her work focuses on helping people thrive and organizations to do the same. Welcome to the call. You might have to unmute um, Megan and I'm going to just um, make, make you a co-host. Forgot to do that. There you go. Can you unmute now? I am unmuted. I can hear oh, you clearly. You. Hopefully you can hear me <laughs> clearly too. So Yes. So let me spotlight you for everyone and myself. So welcome, my dear friend. Um, I know that we are going to have a kind of a celebration, if that's the right word for it, uh, at the end of March. And you and Phoebe and I are going to do something together. But it's hard to believe that it's got to be March next week. And it was a year ago that we kind of started this whole endeavor. To yeah, kind of give I don't people, know, I, don't know if I would call it a celebration. Yeah, that it doesn't feel like, like, the right like a sentence. But we 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 shall we shall we shall um, commemorate the fact that we have a year, and I think with a celebration comes when each one of us has uh, the vaccination or the herd immunity, so that we can see one another again. Then we'll really celebrate. For now, we're sort of I think next month thinking about. Um, all of the growth that we've had this past year, because we can, we all have felt moments of loneliness, right? Uh, loneliness and separation and missing the things that have nourished us. Um, so we'll mark it, uh, we'll mark it with a, um, I don't know, we'll have to come up with a better term. Maybe you guys can write in chat. What should we call it? It's not a celebration. It's a Yeah, something. help us out, everyone, because it, that word doesn't feel right, commemorate. I mean, I'm, you know, the Whole Being Institute's dedicated to the science of human flourishing. And one of the reasons why I wanted to partner with you about this was so that we could give people tools to be resilient. And I think we can celebrate that we flourished. I'm going to let you take it away because my dogs are having a party <laughs> Deb came up with the Deb Levin said recognizing or uh, a rite of passage. So we're getting some suggestions in the chat. Maybe Phoebe grab those while they're coming in, so we can we can name something more appropriate than a celebration. Um, hardiness, that's right, Christine. That's milestone. Yes, that's it is a milestone. So I guess let us start, my friends, the way we always start these things with uh, a moment of pausing. So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, see if you can just make some space. <clears throat> Push your stuff to the side. If you feel comfortable closing your eyes, feel free to do so. If you'd like to look down um, and make a soft gaze, that's um, great too. If you wanna keep your eyes wide open, that's lovely. Take a deep breath in and a big exhale. Taking another deep breath in. Big exhale.
And imagine that your awareness is like a river that flows down through the top of the head, down through the torso and arms, and all the way down the legs right into the toes. And as your attention fills the volume of your body, just spend a moment and notice, wow, what's happening in my feet right now? What can you notice about the shin and the calf? The knees, the thighs. Noticing the quality of your hips. The length of the spine right up through the crown of the head. And sometimes when I do that, I actually pretend like I have a little string on top of my skull that lifts up that spine. And then noticing the shoulders drop away from the ears and pay attention to the sleeves of both arms so that you notice not only the weight of the arms, but also the volume, the density. And then notice the face, the neck, the head. And for the next three breaths, just notice the inhale coming in and the exhale going out. And to end this little mindful moment, take a nice deep breath in. Big exhale. And opening the eyes. And <clears throat> although I see a big picture of myself in front of me, it's you guys I want to see. So I'm just going to scroll through and you might want to do the same and just make eye contact with other people who are joining us here today. It's funny as I'm scrolling through, it's like, oh my goodness, all these connections from the current SIP cohort to past SIP cohorts to people I've seen again and again in the JCC. So you might notice, Jesus, are some of these people now in my connected network just through seeing them again and again here? Yahoo for connections. <sighs> So I guess I want to start with taking us back in time. Uh, raise your hand if you've been here since the very beginning of the JCC stuff. Yeah. I see some of you have your hands up. Oh, lovely. And some of you don't. So for some of you, you might remember, I'm going to do a little time travel back to when we first started doing this. And if, uh, if you remember, like, we were talking about this being maybe a couple of weeks, then a month. I mean, when I think back to the conversations I was having back then, I'm like, what world was I living in? Obviously, um, what transpired in this last year was not entering anywhere into my psyche back last March. Um, so let me just share my slides. Thumbs up if you guys can all see this. Yes, thank you. So if you remember a year ago, um, and those of you who have taken the Certificate in Positive Psychology in Module 1 know that this is the very basis of what we begin with. And it's what I began the JCC with a year ago, saying how we see ourselves, whether we're in this COVID time or not COVID time, our definition of self is a psychological construct. And in fact, that self is not one self. It's made up of what's called our ought self, those things we think we should be doing. It's made up of our authentic self, of where we're standing right here and right now. It's made up of our past self, of our best self moments that really elevate and lift us. 
Um, it's a psychological construct of creating our best possible self, that self that we're working towards. So all of this was as um, a sense of wholeness, that can we hold multiple views of who we are? And you re do you remember this when I first started doing it? I was saying the choices that we make in the pandemic in these early steps, you know, we're either, do you remember this? We're either saying, yes. <laughs> yes. Well, yes. Do you remember when I was using the yes button? Yes, 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 yes. Or we choose in our daily life to say no to some things. No, 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 and oh. So depending on the choice, I know I love doing this, but I think they make my training fun for me anyways, hopefully for you too. Um, so that the choices that we're making on a day-to-day -day basis actually shape who we are becoming. They shape not only what's important for the self in this moment, but they shape who we become over time. And sort of what I, um, my challenge to you early on in the pandemic was, what are you saying yes to? And that's when we unrolled the SPIRE methodology. We talked about the multidimensional ways in which we could build health and wellness. And quite frankly, nothing has made me happier than to see all of the experts that have come through from the alumni of the Certificate in Positive Psychology and all those associated with Whole Being Institute that can really help support your wisdom, knowledge, and learning, and most importantly, your application of the tools. So today I specifically want to make explicit that all of these mental constructs of self are never ever created in isolation. That these concepts of self is so greatly modulated, influenced by who we hang out with. That what we wanna talk about today specifically is this idea of who am I as a connected self? Now, a lot of times when you talk about, or when you hear relationship science, the thing that's highlighted is what to do when you get in a fight. You know, how do I, how do I handle um, negativity constructively? Uh, or when you don't, when you're handling conflict in a um, uh, relationship, or what to do when you have a bad day, how you support someone. But today we really want to focus on uh, what Sarah Aljo, because listen, positive psychologists always have to have a little acronym for everything, is what she calls the positive interpersonal processes. Positive interpersonal processes, or what I'm basically just calling your connected self. And to think about our connections in a way that is helpful for us, helpful for others, um, pandemic or not. I don't know how many of you were here for, for the lecture on Tuesday when uh, the speaker talked about moms and pops and pips. Well, this is, a, I guess, a different pip, mom being moments of meaning, pot pack, pockets of positivity that help our psychological, intellectual, um, physical, and social. Event. That was a moms, pops, and pips that you learned about on Tuesday. This is really, what is that field between you and I? And, what can we do to make that process a little stronger so that I personally feel more connected to you and you feel more connected to me and that we feel as a community more connected to each other. I'm gonna take a pause here because I see there's 21 little notes and I just wanna make sure that there aren't any questions. Oh, hallelujah, Josephine, that's a good, that's a good chat to put together. Um, yes, Sarah Aljove, good. Okay, so I wanna start by telling you a story. This is a painting, an original painting by, by my beloved artist son, Jonathan. So Jonathan's art, um, he's always been this creative dude and he's always been, um, says the most philosophical things. Even when he was young, he would say these philosophical questions or ask me things and I would just stop in my track and go, wow, that's, that's really a good question. And um, I'm so proud of his artwork. He's really, he's actually off to the university 
Art Institute of Chicago in the fall to continue his art studies. So I'm really excited about seeing that for him. But the reason I want to bring you, um, show you his paintings is because I want to share a little story about, he's now 22. Uh, when he was a little guy, he, again, he was always this creative guy, unique thinker, always giving me good questions. Um, he came home one day from kindergarten and he said to me, uh, mom, have you seen the movie Constipation? <laughs> and I did, there's something about even the word constipation that makes me laugh. Have you seen the movie Constipation? And I of course started laughing. And I said, no, honey, I haven't. And he said, well, that's because it hasn't come out yet. Him. Oh, kids say the darndest things, don't they? Um, I know before we actually started here, we were telling a bunch of jokes uh, and I was asking Sheila and Caroline to tell me other stories. And I bet you can think of a time when someone in your life, be it an animal, uh, a young kid. Yeah, well, <laughs> Lisa, that's a good one. <laughs> she wrote in chat, what a movement. <laughs> Oh my goodness, yeah, we could keep going with that one, couldn't we? Um, what is, and by the way, that was a little uncomfortable for me to tell you, oh, and that's not a pun. That was a little uncomfortable for me to tell you that, that joke, but I did it for a specific per, per, purpose, not just a sort of waiting for the punchline. <laughs> uh, here's the punchline. So when we talk about um, your connected self. Your connected self, one of the ways in which you connect with others is to share laughter. And it could be a joke that someone else doesn't get, but really what you're looking at doing is saying, what can I find some fun and joy in? And how can we share laughter? Like I looked at some of you and you, you were laughing about that joke. You did find that funny. And what happens in the brain when we share a laugh together the brain thinks, oh, you and I have a commonality. We are similar. Because look, we're laughing about this same thing. So the idea of, and these are three specific uh, techniques I'm gonna share with you today, not just about sharing laughter, but what we can actively do to increase this felt sense of being connected to others. And one is sharing laughter together. Now, I, I always feel a little, because um, laughter has this sort of darker side too. You've ever been in a position where you feel like someone's laughing at you and you, you, know, you smile, but you're really I'm not feeling all that funny about it um, or feeling excluded or it's not funny for someone else. So this laughter thing, it's, um, it's helpful to be lighthearted and find the simple things that you can laugh about and see if you can find, uh, even in this conversation, like if I were to do, put you into small groups and, and, and say something that was funny, what would you share? You know, what would, what would you actually share in that story? I'm not gonna ask you to do that because sometimes that might be a little uncomfortable for folks. Um, I'll tell you my own little flop of, of, a, of a laughter thing and how it turned into being, even though it didn't turn out the way I expected, how it was helpful. Y'all had sort of weird holidays, right? They weren't what they were before. I usually have my uh, husband's family over on Christmas Eve and my whole family comes over to our house on Christmas day. We obviously couldn't do any of that. Uh, we were planning a Zoom call instead. What a drag. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's just no way around it that, that a Zoom call is not going to cut it. And I was trying to think, how could I increase the laughter quotient for our time together? Because I knew it wasn't going to be bonding. We usually sing songs. We usually eat too much. We usually laugh. You know. So I said, how can I increase the, the, the laughter? Well, my daughter and I decided it would be really fun if on a Zoom call, we did one of those dance parties. And I played a video of a... Um, Christmas Carol, and we all got up and danced to it. 
Does that sound like fun or does that sound like your hell? I don't know. But me and my daughter decided that that's what we we're going to do. And we practiced and we practiced and we, and we were in hysterics, her and I. I mean, we just had so much fun, just her and I preparing for that Zoom call. And so the laughter between us was very therapeutic. It worked, even preparing and picking out, picking out videos, which one should we play? Oh, that one's too corny. Oh, that one's, and then we were thinking about my brother actually doing the dances. Can you imagine Uncle Billy doing this dance? So that part of the laughter work, what didn't work was, as you could probably imagine, when the whole family got on the Zoom call, how many of you think that they wanted to do a dance party dance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I got Elaine. They're like, I should have had Mega Elaine. I should have had, she would have made him get up and dance, right? Or right, get you there. So Elaine's a lecture yoga dance instructor as well. She would have known how to do it, but I started playing it. Emily and I are up dancing and no one else is doing it. Well, you know, 10 seconds into it, I said, well, thank you. I guess we won't be doing this one. But so sometimes when you try and add some zest, and this is the character strength of humor, of zest, of really trying to engage your social connections with a laugh. So it doesn't have to be really difficult. It can be really simple. That's one way in which we can increase this sense of a connected self. Does anyone else want to share a story or share an idea around laughter in, in, a, in just a connected way? I just wanted to mention an observation. So I like Reader's Digest and they always have laughter as the best medicine. So I, I, I see the connection between what you're telling about today. And Janice, what do they do in uh, Reader's Digest? Do they have a joke or something? Is it a... People submit funny stories. Ah. And so there's two pages of, you know, short, you know, eight or nine sentence or even shorter ones. And, you know, you send in your submissions and if they publish it, they, they pay you some sort of amount of money. Um, but it's called Laughter, the Best Medicine. Oh, love that. Thank you, Janice. That's a good idea. Anybody else? I I bought a book called The Best Joke Book, period. And it's very funny. And I memorized some of the jokes. So I go around telling them to everybody and we all laugh. Everybody laughs at these jokes. I can tell one now if you want. Yeah, I'd love to hear it. Go uh, ahead, David. A, a little girl goes to her mother and she says, Mommy, how did mankind begin? And her mother says, well, Adam and Eve had children and we all come from them. And then she goes to her father and she says, how did mankind begin? And her father says, well, we evolved from monkeys. <laughs> and uh, she goes back to her mother and she says, mommy, how come you and daddy have two different answers? And her mother says, well, I was talking about my side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, right? It's a yes. good one. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. My supermarket manager, the people oh. at work, my shared office space. I Everywhere. love that. I love that. Doesn't that make you happier just hearing that? I mean, that was that's what I'm talking about, making us feel more connected. And I, and I just want to say, Megan, I love that you remembered that punchline. The reason I keep telling the constipation joke is because the only joke I can really remember. People tell me jokes that I can never remember the ending. Maybe I'll remember that one though, Megan. That's a good one. Thank you for sharing. And Louise, well, Louis, did you have your hand up? I was just going to say, I have to have laughter in my life every day and very big in my family too. And with my friends mm -hmm. and it, it gets me by. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So now we can pay more attention. Like Megan's idea of just reading a joke, uh, her joke book and bringing it uh, to others and just even saying that one liner. It, it, it is a way of saying, I'm connected to you. We share something similar. We're sharing a laugh and we're building a resonance between us, even if it's just a quick little joke. Um, so thank you for that. Let's go back to, so that was, that's the first thing that your connected self does. It shares laughter with others or can do. I'm not saying you have to like tell jokes. What I am saying is if you want to feel more connected, laughter is one of those ways that are, it can help us connect with others. So the other thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of feeling connected 
is sharing something that good that happened. So we've talked an awful lot about, um, you know, gratitude and noticing the good, but I want to be specific about this as it relates not to our own well-being, but in terms of how that relates to our connectedness to one another. So what I'd love you to do is just think about the last 24 hours, whether it was this morning when you woke up, the hours before this call, last evening, over dinner, are you thinking about something good that happened in the last 24 hours? Y'all got that? What I would love to do, if you're up for it, is just to break into small groups for like maybe just three to four minutes and just say, hey, this is what something good that happened to me. And uh, for me, for example, something good that happened to me, I was, uh, uh, well, I won't say that one. I'm going to let you guys do your own. Something good that happened. Um, any questions about what I'm going to have you do? All right. So I'm going to just put some breakout rooms. I've got them ready. I was going to. Oh, do you? Okay, you're good. Yeah. You're, yeah. I, I usually put about five or six participants in case people don't want to join. How's yeah, that sound, Megan? That's great. And you can obviously just listen or you can add in. So um, good. Here, Top here we go. And you can just uh, join, click join, and then we'll be moved to that. Okay. So I'm going to just start my timer. I think we'll do that for just like four do minutes. Do you want me to broadcast? Yeah, just say, give them four minutes. That would be great. And then I'm going to move bands. Wait to um, um, <laughs> six. All right. And then let's check. Okay. And I think we might have some people that still are in our room now and that if anybody wants to share in the main room. Yeah, so I'd like to hear your good over. news. If, you, if you're proud of something, if something good happened, if you want to share some, some good news, um, I would love to hear. Uh, well, it's, I can go first. I was thinking about this when you were talking about that. Just in the last 24 hours, I have, of course, my workout with my sisters and Phoebe joins us and my niece joins us this morning. It was like 7 a.m. and we had a blast. And um, we're learning French, or at least I'm trying to. So that was kind of fun. Yeah. And then I cooked dinner. Uh, I got to Trader Joe's. That's always an accomplishment. And I uh, got to Trader Joe's and I was able to cook dinner for my husband and get him to eat some more vegetables. And Yay. Was, yeah, and that was fun because we put on some music. We put on Broadway show tunes yeah. and we were singing them. And that was really fun. That's good news, my friend. Congratulations on learning a, or starting to learn a little language and for eating more vegetables. Uh, yeah. Love My that. French includes like a pan au chocolat. <laughs> That's about all I know. So bread? Is, that, is that what that is? That what that is? <laughs> yes, bread with chocolate. <laughs> uh, I did, I did, my good news is that today is the first run for maple syrup. Uh, we live on a maple farm. We make maple syrup. Um, Joe's been busy tapping. The good news is, is that spring is right around the corner because the sap is flowing and pretty soon we're making maple syrup. Yay. Who else yeah. has some good news? Esther said she was, there was no one in her break room. So Esther, do you want to share with us? Just unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, well, I actually, I had been at a point of like, really bad uh the effects of isolation and a uh, very dear friend of mine from college had invited me out for the holidays in december i went i and to california and san rafael so i went from boston to san rafael i've been here since december 
So wow. we've been going on a lot of event adventures. And he said, and so my friend said, well, we should go on an event yesterday. We should go on another adventure, adventure. And so we went to Half Moon Bay, which I had not been to like for like 30 years. And it's just, it just brought, it brings so much normalcy back into the old normal, back into my life that I'm like so grateful for, you mm -hmm. know, it's just, I feel like I'm a changed person, you know, and, mm -hmm. and also have been laughing much more. That was the other thing I had not been smiling. I felt like I hadn't been smiling or laughing for so long. And, and that's, you know, I'm just so grateful. Yeah, that is, that is indeed good news when you're with your friends, Esther. Thank you for sharing. And I'm just noticing- you know, other, that other than distancing and putting a mask on, it's sort of everything else feels more normal, you know? Yeah, that's good. And you could be outside with the beautiful weather in California. Caroline, it's, yeah. you can bring people back. Uh, okay. Just let them know it's the last minute. So I don't know if you have it set for the last minute to yeah. put down the small groups. And Andrea, I see that you said you can't do the audio, but yesterday you went for a nice walk in a neighborhood park with a neighbor and it had a good chat. Both enjoyed it. Lovely, lovely. That is good news. <clears throat> and Robin was sharing that she was with a girlfriend um, spending time and she was noticing last week that uh, they weren't laughing as much as they used to. So this is a good good conversation to have and bring up because I think it's important to share those times when we are actually, you know, laughing more, especially in the last 24 hours. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I think we've got everybody back. Can you hear me? It's tough to hear you, Lisa. No. Um, can you hear me now? A little bit better, yeah. Oh. You, you know what, why don't you put it in the chat because it's tough to hear you. I can't hear her, can you, Megan? No, it keeps freezing, so. Yeah. I think chat would be best. Okay. So you shared some good, good news, I hope, or someone in your group shared good news. Um, yeah, it is that anyone I want to hear from one person and actually chat that in. Oh, Bunny said that was fun. Um, what else happened when you were either sharing good news or you heard good news that someone was sharing? Maybe put that in the chat. Before I talk about uh, how we share, you Van said she felt their joy. Bunny said that was fun. Uh, Lisa said could talk longer. Nancy could share in joy and pride, felt a bonding, made me smile, nice uplift, felt happiness. It's a great way to meet new people, felt connected, heartwarming. So this sharing of good news between two people, um, we're talking about our connected self. So we're not necessarily talking about just noticing good news. We're actually talking about expressing and sharing our good news. So let's talk a little bit about the science behind that. So your best connected self not only shares humor and laughter and some lightheartedness, but also expresses and speaks and shares and listens to good news. And so what do we mean by that? When you are actually speaking about sharing some good news, you actually feel better about the event. And this, again, is still the work of um, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Aljo, and she's done some work with Jonathan Haidt um, and talking about the elevation effect. So when I speak something that like, oh, I, if I come home and say, oh, just had a, a, a met the most interesting person, uh, online, I always say that to my husband, and I say, oh, I just had this most interesting conversation about um, uh, a group of people I met, and I share that good news with someone. Um, I feel elevated because I'm reminding myself about the event, and normally if we're feeling good about an event, 
we have an action tendency of pride and that natural tendency of pride um, has an action tendency of sharing. We want to share when something good happens in our lives. It's a natural action to want to share that with others. And so not only when we do sharing, do I as an individual feel better about that event, but I feel better about you as the listener. I tend to see you as more understanding and more caring as you listen to that good event with an openness and, and um, a constructive responding. So this connected point, this connected self, when we share good news, we feel better about the event and those that we share it with also are seen as more understanding and caring. This does have a caveat because if you know a, um, a negative nilly in your circle that you go share good news with and they just rain on your parade, that is not the type of responding and sharing of good news that I'm talking about that builds a connected self. So don't go out and share good news with everybody and expect everybody to actually give you back what's called active and constructive responding. This is the work of um, Shelley Gable who talks about when, how do we build relationships by how we respond to other people's um, news. Are we active constructive? Like, oh, that's wonderful news. I know how important that is to you. And I can see that that would bring out your strengths and I can see you utilizing your curiosity and et cetera, et cetera. Now I can tell you, I'll give you an example. Um, when my son wanted to go to the Art Institute of Chicago, um, and he wanted to get his own place. He didn't want to live in the, in, the, in the housing at the school. Well, first of all, I wanted to have him to go here in Boston. Secondarily, I did not want him living on his own. I actually wanted him in the, in the, um, the dormitory where he could at least get food. I knew he, you know, I, I didn't have to worry about the, the, the heating bill or the phone bill or just like, go to the dormitory, honey. But I didn't, when he said that, those things, my first response, I wanted to be, what's called, uh, um, maybe, you know, sort of pat, like say, oh, honey, that's good, but don't you think you'd rather live in the dorm? Or don't you think that that would be probably, that any of those first responses, um, even though I was feeling that at the time, it's not the first thing I expressed. It's congratulations. I know going to school there is really important. It is your number one choice. And I know you want to be independent. Now, it doesn't mean I didn't circle back to that, and I'll be happy to let you all know, he independently made the decision to live in the dormitories. He has applied for the housing there, which makes me very happy. But if I led with that, I would have sort of defeated and deflated his dream that he was telling me the really good news. So when people are telling you good news, there might be a little red flag or warning signal. And the, one of the things that we can do as listeners is just say, how should I show up for this person? Um, what's needed in this moment for this person. So sort of passive undercutting, like, oh, do you think that, you know, do you think you'll really be able to take care of yourself in an apartment? Um, that would be destructive way of, of having that conversation. So when we share good news, um, we really want to do it in a, a place that feels uh, like when I, when I just broke you up into groups, right? It felt, okay, we're learning how to do this. We're sharing good news and um, we're in an environment where we can um, cultivate sort of those positive responses so that we can sort of build that community for ourselves. And this is, I think, something that we tend to, we tend to miss this, right? We, we might not think the news is big enough. We might not think that the accomplishment is worth sharing. And we really diminish our ability to connect with others when we withhold something good that happened. Um, and so celebrating the good news can be so, so simple and so small. And some of you are in breakout groups and I shared with the team that was here in the main room that Today, the sap is running here on the farm. I live on a maple farm. We make maple syrup. And the good news for today, for those of us in the Northeast, is that the sap is running, which means spring is right around the corner. We're going to start making maple syrup. And we know that the winter is, all, is coming to an end. That's good news. 
So giving voice to that reminds me again, spring is coming. And I posted this on Facebook the other day. Um, and I'll, I got back a ton of responses of people saying, oh yeah, I hear the birds chirping. Oh, I saw this bird on my bird feeder. Oh, I heard this. So by sharing good news, either social media or with your family, with your friends, um, you sort of start this process that other people then can build upon. Oh yeah, I did notice the birds out there. Oh yeah, this did make it. Oh yeah, the sun is getting, is staying out longer. Uh, the thing I wanna talk about next is, um, something we, we have talked a great deal about. And again, I'm gonna talk about this, not from the self-creation standpoint, but from a relationship self standpoint. So what I'd like you to do is to take that same 24 hours we just looked at. And as you think about these last 24 hours, who could you thank about something? Who did something for you? As you th think about the last 24 hours, that a thank you would be in order. Even if you gave it to them already, just thinking, like, who could I thank? What did someone do? Um, and as you're writing about this, I just wanna see if I missed something here. Uh, Elaine says, yes, I grew up in a culture that one doesn't brag, self-praise stinks. So the good news doesn't have to be uh, like, I did this. This could, The good news could be, um, I was with a great group of people and we really enjoyed dancing together. Uh, I don't know if that would be seen as a, as, a, as a bragging thing, but it really is the good news that is shareable good news. Um, I'm getting some modern family clips. You must copy and paste that clip so we can all watch it afterwards and see that. Um, so Marsha, I feel good about this class. So yes, that's a, that's a, that's a good news too. Um, so who could you thank? A friend helped me create a fun surprise visit for another friend. So that could be someone that you thank. Um, my husband took me out for a walk yesterday. I thanked him profusely. It really meant a lot. It's so fun, so true, Anne, that when others say, come on, let's get out of the house, let's go for a walk. We might not feel like it, but I really wanna thank you for, for thinking of me and getting me some fresh air. Uh, what else do you have someone that you want to thank? Uh, the maintenance man who fixed your door, that's a good thank you. Uh, the most joyous day in the Jewish calendar. Oh, Lisa, thank you for that. Sorry, we couldn't say that out loud, but I, I did not know that, so I appreciate that. Uh, Claudia, my husband is cooking dinner for me today. That's a big thank you. One of my best friends made me laugh until my, that's a big thank you. Thank you so much for doing that. My grown kids who call me and connect, I feel good about that. Elizabeth, my sister organized a sister yoga challenge. That's lovely. Oh, love that. Lisa says to look at her photo. Oh, <laughs> Lisa, that's a good photo. That makes me laugh. Thank you for that. <laughs> that makes a statement. Uh, so we've talked a lot about thank you. I want to go ahead and actually talk a little bit more about how that thank you builds a connected self. So the idea when you say thank you, it's, um, it's more than a thank you. When you are looking for something to thank someone for, you actually build connections in a more conscious way with people who are making a positive difference in your life. So Sarah Aljo calls this uh, the find, remind, and bind theory. Um, that when you are actively looking for things that people are doing that support you to thank them for, that you actually find more people in your life. In other words, if I was actively scanning the day of who, who can I thank? Um, I would thank 
for example, Caroline for her leadership role in the JCC in her vision for actually bringing this forward and her hard work to make it happen. That by finding people like that, by, by keeping in mind who I want to thank, I can actually find more people. So I have had other conversations with other organizations who are trying to build community because I've kept in mind the thank you that I have for Caroline, which allows me to see other places where perhaps I could also um, uh, create good relationships. So as we keep appreciation and thank you of others in mind, it helps us keep a perspective of finding others, finding others in our group. Because you ever feel too small, like your circle is too small? Um, the more we keep the thank you in mind, the more we're able to find others who can build good social connections with us. And not only once we find them, when we keep thank yous in mind, it reminds us why we picked that person in the first place. So for example, um, our significant other or our partner or a good friend, when we notice what they're doing for us and we say thank you, we express it, we don't just think it or feel it, we express it, we're reminded why we picked that person to be our partner, or why we picked that person to be with. So not only does that mental mindset help us find a, connect, a connectedness that's helpful for our well-being, it reminds us what relationships really help build us and really help support us. So it helps us find relationships. It helps remind us of the good in that, re in that relationship. And lastly, it helps bind us together, right? Because not only am I remembering the good that you do, but when you express it to me, I'm elevated and reminded back. So I'm binded more closely to you. And this is why Sarah Aljo calls this the find, remind, and bind theory. That as we not only notice gratitude, but when we express a thank you, that it builds a stronger connection between you and I. And so many times we're not actually thinking about the specific way to say thank you. Like it's not just a thanks. It's really what we want to do when we say thank you is that we put the you in thank you, that we actually put the emphasis on that other person. For example, Phoebe, I am so thankful for your ability to stay connected with our community and to use your skills of social intelligence to create such a powerful way of sharing news. You've made a difference not only to the whole being institute, to myself personally, but to thousands of people that now have access to this. That thank you to my dear friend, Phoebe, um, even though I've said, I've said it to her a million times, like I'm so grateful for this, for this work. I'm so grateful for this platform. Um, I'm so grateful for her vision to do this. Um, I've, I've told her thank you, uh, and just because we do it once doesn't mean it goes aside. It's like, I really do have these feelings of uplift every time I come on this JCC about what's been accomplished. So putting the spotlight on, for example, Phoebe, when I say, thank you, Phoebe, um, is naming specifically what she has brought to the table, what she has accomplished, what her hard work has done. It's putting the, as Sarah Aljo would say, it's putting the you in thank you. And many times um, we can be on the receiving end of a thank you. And I also just wanted to bring up, how are you when someone says thank you, Esther or Corinne or Susie or anybody on the call today? Sometimes we have um, a knee jerk reaction when someone says thank you for this. And we quickly say, oh, it was nothing or Oh, no, 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 thank you, because you did this, that, and the other thing. I would like to actually invite you, when someone says thank you to you, that you smile, take it in, 
Say, I appreciate that. And really feel what it feels like to be appreciated in that way without feeling that you need to deflect, without feeling like you need to um, switch it and give it over to them, without feeling like you have to actually do it. Uh, um, oh, you said thank you to me. Now I have to say thank you to you. And now, no, you did this. Do you know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> Um, and just notice what is that like to be uh, thanked, to be appreciated, and to really let that resonate with the sense of self and this connection with another. So your connected self shares laughter and humor. Your connected self shares good news and listens to someone else's good news with an open heart and really a, a sense of, oh, I'm excited for you. That's such good news. And your connected self shares and expresses thanks to actually to be able to say thank you. You did this and I appreciate it. So when we look at this find, remind, and bind theory of, of gratitude in a connection relationship sense, um, sharing a thank you, it helps others actually feel more connected or it helps people be more interested in being connected with you. Uh, they might not even know you, but if you are expressing things, it creates an interest in people wanting to be connected to you. At least that's what the science shows. And it also is a way of building what Jane Dutton calls high quality connections. Um, and again, this is the authentic thank you. It's not the fake because I should be saying thank you. Um, and by the way, those of you who are interested in this topic of authenticity, um, that is a really rich sense of who is my authentic self and what is authentic in this moment. Dr. Maria Sarwat has a wonderful way of talking about how do we do these things in an authentic way that is resonant with our authentic self, who we are. She's running a course at Whole Being Institute that starts next week. It's called Authenticity. Um, Caroline or, or Phoebe, if you have the link for that, you can pop it right in there. Um, those of you who are interested in learning more about the authentic self as it relates to some of these concepts that we're talking about today, her course starts next week. What I found interesting about this work of expressing thanks, not just feeling gratitude, not just writing about it, but actually speaking it to the person that you're thankful for, if you witness someone saying this type of thank you, it also builds their connection to you and to the other person. So not only, for example, when I said, thank you, Phoebe, for this work, her and I shared this um, uh, connection around the thank you, but you actually witnessing it actually also increases your sense of connection. Isn't that strange? That's called the witness effect. And I do believe this is where um, Jonathan Haidt and Sarah Aljo work together to say, all right, we have this connected relationship. What happens if someone just watches someone give a, an authentic thank you? How, what, how does that make them feel? It elevates and connects that witness as well, um, which is so interesting to me. This is how we do good work in the world, right? We model it, we connect with others, others see it, and it changes their outlook on how they see the world. And I guess the bottom line, and this is what Sarah Aljo would say, if you, if you feel it, express it, even the small things, and even to strangers. I'm noticing a lot with COVID, you know, people open the door because one, they don't want to be too close to you. They want to stay away from you. So they step aside and open the door rather than to walk through at the same time. What would happen if we looked them in the eye and we smiled and we said, thank you. I really appreciate your courteous, courtesy in opening that door. Like really saying the you and recognizing the person on the other end of that thank you. Here are the three things you'll want to take away from today for your connected self. If you're feeling isolated and alone, um, there are three things you can do in order to feel more connected with yourself and with others. And that is to share a laugh, share some good news or receive that good news that someone else is sharing or share a thank you. Oh my goodness, look at that, three minutes to go. Ah, I, I, 
I nailed that. Yeah. End, that nailed that ending time. Sometimes I don't. You do. You know, I was. What I appreciate so much about you, Megan, is that you're able to get so much content in. And I've said this to you before in such a relaxed way. Mm -hmm. I hardly realize that we're getting all this information in, right, everyone? And it seems like it just flows. Like we did a breakout room. We did all these other things. And we got a lot of content in um, in a short amount of time. And I love that it's so practical, mm -hmm. right? That we can do these, these practices and it is so practical. And I'm going to be talking next week about Sonia Lubomirsky's work and how these micro um, practices that we have make a difference and they do determine. Um, we were talking uh, yes, uh, Tuesday about, um, what was it, F the undoing effect that Barbara Fredrickson talks about. And this feels to me like, in a way, what you're suggesting is doing some of that. Mm. Un undoing uh, that negativity. Yeah, that has. yeah, yeah. I, it is a relearning, a retraining of, of many of our habits. And I do see a question that came in from, from Linda about the doctor's name. I'm not sure what doctor uh, I mentioned. Was it Dr. Sarah Aljo? A-L-G-O-E is really the heart of the research that I shared with you today. The other one that she's worked with um, for awe and elevation of the witness is uh, Jonathan Haidt, H-A-I-G-H-T. I'm not sure, um, Linda, if there's someone else that you were particularly looking for. Oh, Elaine said she's going to start telling jokes. That's okay. great. <laughs> I'm a little uncomfortable telling my kindergartner joke, but it really <laughs> is the only punchline I can remember, Elaine. <laughs> Well, it's not as bad as mine. What did the ocean say to the shore? Nothing. It just waved. <laughs> is that bad? It's so bad. It's so bad. It's funny. <laughs> it's the only one I can remember, too. So I'm with you. I hear you on that. Um, best joke book, period, Megan says. Uh, that's that's the one to get, everyone. There you I go. Did put, that's right. I did put in the chat, someone said something about uh, the modern family clip. Yeah. So that in the chat. And of course, Maria Sawa is going to be doing that wonderful course. If you have an opportunity to do that, please do so. We have some, um, some wonderful programs tonight uh, is Lily Korea is going to be teaching us how to fortify our immunity. We don't want to boost our immunity at this time. The way that COVID works with our immune system, we want to fortify it. And <clears throat> she's going to be doing, I love Lily, she makes everything simple, all the cooking simple. Then there's going to be a Nia dance party. Megan, Megan maybe you can come to that. I would love that. Right? I would with love that. Uh, me and um, Winna Lee. I'll put all this in the chat so you guys can see that. And then Zen Tangle, of course. If you haven't tried that, that is so creative. That happens every uh, Friday at, um, I think it's at 1130 and it's a beyond the basics class. And uh, have you seen that? You just line by line, you just create these amazing things. And before you know it, you've made this incredible design. And I sort of love things like that. It magically creates mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Any other questions, anybody? I'm a belly dancer. I love that, Megan. It's so fun, Zentangling, and yes, it is. And I put in the chat those links. Um, also, Ala ask Alexa for a joke. I have not oh, tried that. That's a good idea. I have not. Uh, what time is party? Uh, the Nia Dance Party is at noon on Sunday. And uh, tonight we'll be cooking if you want to come to that. I believe that's it. Can I just mention another event tonight? Um, Tonight is, is Purim and there's this amazing Purim spiel at the Jewish Theological Seminary that is the most hysterical thing I've ever been to. It, I, I promise you will laugh all night. I put it in the chat, you, you have to register, it's free. And Rabbi Jan Erbach, who um, writes original lyrics to Broadway songs every year, she writes original lyrics, it's totally new each year. And it's, and it's really hysterical. So if you wanna laugh all night, um, it's in the chat. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. I love that we're sharing our funny stories. And you know what? Maybe make a make a a little note to yourself today to call someone or email someone a funny story, right? Or a thank you, or um, to share a laugh, right? Did I, I give you or... permission to use the fifth the 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 kindergartner's uh, joke. <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome. Why don't we unmute everyone? You can say goodbye to whomever you would like to on the call and just reach across the person above you, below you, next, thank you, next thank to you. you. Thank you. Always love you, everybody. Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 So much fun. Bye. Hopeful. I don't see All right, everyone. As always. Have a wonderful weekend. Take care. You thank Bye. you, Meg. Bye. Thank you, Phoebe. Thank Take care, you, you guys. Be well. Where's the forum information? I don't see that. Um, oh. My name is Lenore. You have to scroll up. I put it in the chat. It's um, go to the Jewish Theological Seminary, JTS. Um, let me go back. It says. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you, Lois. Yeah. Did you get that? Did you get that, Laura? No. Give me one second. I'll just copy it into the chat right now again so you can see it. Okay. Awesome. I won't end the call. At least I hope I didn't push the button. <laughs> Did I push it? No. All right. Good. So you can, you okay, can. Thank uh, you. I didn't see that.